Let's start by creating a custom dataset to train our neural network. Here I have a comment for GitHub Copilot. Create a CSV with 1000 XYZ and result values. XYZ are between 1 and 100. Result is X plus Y and then divided by Z. These parentheses are important because if you didn't have the parentheses, the division would take priority and Y would be divided by Z first. So keep that in mind. Multiplication and division takes precedent. We're going to let GitHub Copilot suggest us some code. Okay, this should work. Most important, one of the most important things is here is this field names. We need to have a name for each of our columns. Everything else seems to be all right. This should work, I believe. Let's just change the name of the file to data.csv. And if you were to run this, now we should get a data.csv file. Here we go. It's just that the decimal points are a little bit too long. We can actually fix this by making a comment here. Limit decimal places to one. And if you were to just like, rewrite the result value, you should round it to only one decimal place. If you run this again, you should get only one decimal place. This is good. Sometimes CSV files can be difficult to read. I found a cool little extension called CSV to table in Visual Studio Code. I have it installed. To use it, you have your select your data.csv. Make sure you don't have anything selected inside of it. You come to this search bar, make it greater than sign, and then just type in CSV here, convert table, convert the table from CSV, and it just makes it so much more readable. Next, let's copy a part of our data set and give it to OpenAI's Playground as context. Set sample data.csv is this, so it has some understanding of what the data set is. I have tried both Text DaVinci and Code Code DaVinci. I think Text DaVinci is fine. Code DaVinci seems to write more complicated code. The neural networks are a bit complicated, and you're going to have to have a few go at it. Try it a few times before you get it working. Prompt is build a PyTorch neural network to train on data.csv for result. We want to train and optimize for result. I said use 0 0.8, 0 0.2 train test split. I'm not sure if it's going to do that. Most of the time it neglects this. We'll see. Train for 1000 epochs iteratively. Print loss every 100 epochs. Print accuracy in the end. Hopefully it'll do that. And have a test case in the end. Well, let's see what it writes and then we'll review the code if it works. Okay, actually I've copied it into Visual Studio Code. I just had to make a quick check. I'll show you what it was. Uh, I just was having with this formatting, so I just changed it to an if string. Like this, a modern if string. It's really nothing. Okay. And when we run this, it works, it trains, and there's a problem. So we get a test loss, accuracy is not very good, and the result is not correct. If you look at it, 53 plus 21 divided by 44 is definitely not 5. And the problem is right here. So it had to split the training and testing data. So it didn't have this thousand rows. But so remember, we gave it example data. So it's thinking our data set is only that much. That's why it's actually splitting it into like only four training data and four testing data, something like that. So I'm going to do 1000 rows total. So it has an understanding of how many we have. So it should do a better job now. Here we go, it just split it 800, 200. And if we run it now, I believe we should get a better accuracy. Okay, this is not bad. One, even 53 plus 21 divided by 44. We got so much closer. Let's review the code and see if we can make any improvements. So here we are importing all the dependencies. We are loading our data set as a data frame. Here we are splitting in the train and test 800 rows for training and 200 rows for columns. The column here is placed so that it takes the first 800 and then the last, whatever is left after the 800. Here we're converting it to tensors because PyTorch uses its tensor type. I just want to mention that a lot of times when I was trying this D type equals torch.float, it wasn't, wasn't there. And if you don't have this, you end up getting MAT1 and Matrix1 and Matrix2 not being the same type. So 
If you do try this and get mate, mate, mate 1 and mate 2 not being of the same type, make sure that you have this whenever you're converting it to torch.tensor. Here, the neural network is defined with single layer of 10 neurons. It's essentially three layers, but the hidden layer is made up of 10. We could actually increase this to, let's say, 100. We're using a ReLU activation function, instantiating the model. We're using the atom optimizer and mean squared loss. There should be mean squared error loss. It should be all right. This is our epochs. We're training it for 1,000. We could train it for more, let's say for 2,000. But we have already increased the neural network size. Here it is printing the loss every 100 epochs. So it is evaluating the evaluating the model right here. I believe at the very end, and printing the accuracy. And we also have a test case. Let's just make this test case more readable. Let's say 10 and 30 and 20. So this should give us two because 40 divided by 20 should be two. So if you were to run this again with a larger neural network, let's see what happens. Here we go. It's pretty quick to train. And our accuracy is not working very well for some reason. It's a zero accuracy, but the, we see that loss is being reduced. This is what we want to see. And it had predicted 2.0 actually, it got really close. We could have also trained it for 2000 epochs. Let's see how that goes. As you see, it's pretty fast. Here we go, 2.4, though it got skewed a little bit. We could also add additional layers to it. For example, let's add another 100. So now we have two hidden layers with 100 neurons each. Let's run this. It just got a little bit slower. It has prediction tests for, oh. Not sure why we got so many values for the test prediction. Let me run it again. Again, it gave me multiple answers, but all almost all of them are around two. So it had learned, definitely. So I'm not too familiar with PyTorch. The reason why this is useful using the playground is to create quick mockups, which you can modify later. We're just using it for a simple regression problem. But you can also use it for vision analysis, like image analysis that for that PyTorch have specialized libraries like Torch Vision, such and so. I just found out why we were getting 100 results, such as the reason is remember when we added an additional layer, let's just go ahead and do that 100, for example. And when we added this, we neglected to add an activation function to it. And this part was just getting 100 results out of the FC2 layer, because essentially what the third layer here is doing is it's collapsing the 100 into a single output. So what we need to do is add a second layer, which with the ReLU activation and change this to the third one, third layer. Now when we run this, hopefully, we should train nicely and we should get a single answer. Yeah, 2.3. Okay, I just wanted to let you know of that. When you change the layering structure of your neural network, you also have to change the activation, the forward method of the class as well. Take a look at PyTorch.org. PyTorch makes it really a breeze to install. I use pip install and you just select your system locations and it just gives you a command to run. I use the pip install. Uh, honestly, TensorFlow, my experience with TensorFlow was a bit painful. Also, their tutorials are pretty good. The quick start, for example, it gives you a really general idea of how to use PyTorch. Please take a look. Take a look at their documentation as well. They have a great documentation. See Torch Vision for image-related neural networks. I hope you found this useful. I meant this to be a quick little mock-up video how we can create custom data sets, for example, to quickly run experiments. And PyTorch is great for firing up neural networks. I'll try to make a more detailed video in the future, but in the meantime, take care. See you next time.